Hey everyone, my name is Aspen Dudzik and I am your host for Forestry Talks, a podcast that explores all things forestry in Alberta. I'm here today at the beautiful Fairmont Jasper Park Lodge in Jasper, Alberta, and we're here to celebrate our annual general meeting and conference for the Alberta Forest Products Association. I've got some great guests that are gonna join me for the show this week. You're gonna love them. I can't wait to share them with you. Welcome back everyone. I am super excited to have Sandra Cardinal here with me. Sandra is the Director of Indigenous Relations at the Alberta Pacific Forest Industries. Sandra, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing I'm very fine. It's really good meeting a lot of people, exchanging a lot of information and just meeting uh, friends I haven't seen and people I haven't seen for a long time. And, yeah, and like I said, it's very informative. The networking is great. Yeah, awesome. I'm glad to hear that. And I I just really want to take this opportunity to welcome you to my show, Forestry Talks. I'm really honored that you are here to join me. And um, while we get into it, Sandra, I'd love to know, could you share with us a little bit about where you're from and and your journey? Okay, yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, um, I always start off with my name, which is I'm Sandra Cardinal. I'm from the Kikino Métis Settlement. And if people don't know uh, about uh, the Métis Settlements, there's eight of them in Alberta. They're land-based Métis. Uh, and I would suggest that people go onto the website to learn more about uh, the history of the Métis settlements. It's very, it's really very interesting. Uh, my dad was part of the Métis Nation way back, uh, 1935, when Métis settlements were formed. And there's, uh, I could do a whole history there, but I don't want Absolutely. to do because it's very time consuming. But I was born and raised there many, many years ago. <laughs> uh, went to school in Kikino, uh, started early because uh, they uh, apparently I had two twin brothers and they started and because I was such a tomboy I cried to go to school with them because I was with them and they Aww. let me go to school and they, I guess I was uh, had enough uh, knowledge and learning from hanging around them they let me stay on and so I started early back then they didn't have Head Start or Kindergarten and so grade one and two in Kikino and then bust off to Lac Labiche where Grade 10 moved to McMurray and uh, graduated up there and um, worked and then did some post-secondary into some of uh, engineering, dabbled in that. And, wow. And uh, worked in that for a bit then moved back, uh, got married, back to Kikino and that's where I continue to reside. So Wonderful. I was born and raised in Kikino and still live there with my I have three children, seven grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. Wow, a very big family. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> and it's nice that you still have that close co- connection to your community. Yes, my dad was originally from the Satellite uh, First Nation. And uh, but then, like, after marrying my mom, he was a member of the settlements and uh, made Kikino Mady Settlement. And, again, taught us uh, a lot about... Um, I guess growing up in 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 his uh, lifespan, which was involved the residential school, but mm-hmm. he always said to me, "Is you gotta it was my life. You gotta do what's good for you in your life, and education is a big thing." So it was very important, I think, in my younger years for my family, my brothers and sisters, that education was very instilled in us to like if we wanted to, I guess. Uh, uh, succeed is that yeah let's go to school and learn so mm-hmm. I'm so glad for that yeah absolutely um, Sandra could you share with me a little bit about your journey to forestry and what that looked like well it's quite interesting because uh, it was quite by accident that <laughs> I've been working with the Mady Settlements Transition Commission it was when the Mady Settlements Act uh, got enacted back in 1990 and uh, uh, I worked with the Métis Settlements Transition Commission. It had a lifespan of seven years. And so when that was coming to an end, I seen this advertisement in the local newspaper for coordinator position at Holpac, which is Alberta Pacific Forest Industries. Uh, and uh, it was close to home, so I applied. I had no idea what it was. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what forestry was. I didn't know what a pulp <laughs> mill was. I didn't even know the location. Uh, fortunately, I did get the position, and uh, yeah, I started working in that career and and proceeded to learn. There was a lot of, I think, um, 
uh, from a technical aspect because of the engineering background and all the oil and gas uh, background information I had. There was a lot that mm-hmm. was relative to the forestry that I could uh, capitalize on. I shouldn't say capitalize, but um, I guess uh, like put utilize? the two together. Utilize. Yeah. There you go. And and then my job there, which I wasn't sure, was going out and working with communities. So I think that started a, um, a real journey for for me in my life. And and I think it's been very interesting and uh, I would say a very good experience since then. Mm-hmm. Very, very, I'm very happy that I've had that opportunity because I've gained a lot of friends and a lot of communities. Plus, there's been a lot of relatives and a lot of communities that I work with and stuff and it's been good. And, uh, yeah. It's been, uh, yeah, it's been a journey. Well, that is so wonderful to hear. And, and you've been with Alpac for a while now, right? Yes, I started in 1996. So be going on to, I guess, 28 years here coming up. And uh, yeah, working in a position I started as coordinator. And I think in a couple of years, I was dir- director and, mm-hmm. and have been since then. Well, that's incredible. So you must be enjoying it then to be there for so long. Yes, I do enjoy it because I enjoy seeing the success uh, that you can bring when you're working with the community, when you you're working and you're helping the community, and mm-hmm. and see some young kids that are like the one experience I like will always like to share is I went to one community where they had young people grad graduating. One was a single parent already, and mm-hmm. she was graduating from grade twelve, and I was there to present some. Uh, graduation awards and one was uh, uh, a pregnant mother but it was so good to just see and how happy they were that they actually were able to still continue and get their education and it's it's doing things that are very very I think meaningful to people within the community and when you see that you can help them Mm -hmm. and you can help you can get the company to understand the communities and the community to understand the company and if you can work together and bring success and especially now with young people mm-hmm. there's so much opportunity and I think it's really good and I think that's why I've been there because the job yeah. does does uh, uh, it, it brings it brings them type of values there that you know that it's going to be very helpful and beneficial mm-hmm. and you're going to make a difference in people's lives and I think that's what's so meaningful about it. Yeah, that must be really rewarding to do that type of work. Yes, it is in a lot of sense because uh, um, it's it's like I say, you gain a lot of friendships along the way. Um, there's a lot of challenges as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not saying that it's all all like <laughs> that yeah. easy and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's like just knowing that you're going to make a difference and it's going to be for the good. Mm-hmm. At least that I hope at the end that that's what it's going to be. Absolutely. Well, it's so wonderful that they're able to have somebody like you working in that role to, to help with those relationships. And I'm wondering if you could share with me a little bit about um, some of the questions that you might get asked uh, in a community when you're having those conversations about forestry. Early in my career, I used to get asked a lot is like, is it difficult for being a woman to go work in a community? Mm. And I was quite remember that. And, and I would, my answer to them was, is I never noticed, like I never, I never really noticed, but that was a question that was always posed to me. I'm not sure why that question was asked of me, but mm. um, uh, it, it it kind of interested me that you know that they would pose it that way and the fact that I wonder if they ask guys is it difficult for a guy to go work in that but I right. would never hear that and I think it was because I guess there might have been uh, a thinking that in the indigenous world that maybe that woman maybe didn't do that that mm. the, the type of work at that time I'm not sure what mm-hmm. that thinking was but for myself, I was just being who I am and going out and talking to people, meeting people, listening to their concerns, seeing how I can help, working with them and come, trying to come up with solutions with them on um, things that would help uh, uh, working with the leaderships, some things that would help the community and also uh, 
uh, work with the people with the pack so that they could understand the community and you could get some good synergies working together, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what are maybe some of the things that um, you've observed are important when you're having those conversations about maybe reaching an agreement or um, yeah, any of those conversations when you're, you're coming to a community? Well, I think well, the first thing I think I, one of the key lessons I learned is I was one of my first experiences is was I was going to the community and I had my notebook and I had my pencil and I was going to do notes <laughs> and I'm sitting there with a, a chief and one of the counselors and he looks at me and he looks at my book and he sits back and I was like mm, I don't think he's going to talk to me very much so I closed my book I put my pen away put my books away <laughs> and we talked and we talked and we, it was basically me asking him like tell me about your community yeah. the same way you're talking to me is is I was wanting to learn and that's what I did is like to listen and to learn mm-hmm. from the community because every community is different and just wanting to know and have that understanding and, and not be well I guess be very open-minded and not judgmental or mm-hmm. or have any preconceived notions and and it was really, really good. So I think that for me was was a good way to approach yeah. um, when I go work in communities. Yeah, absolutely. Could you maybe share some advice with uh, other groups that might be maybe starting their journey uh, to building relationships with Indigenous communities? But my, I guess my advice is that be yourself, be genuine, uh, and if you have the right if you have the right intentions, I believe it'll be good. And then when you go to communities, it's like I said, don't have any preconceived notions or no no judgment. You go there, you listen. Listening is a big thing. I mean, what I always tell people, and this was in even my internal meetings at Alpac, I go into a meeting and I have my my books with me, and right at the top of the page, I'd write really big listen. So it's mm. like for me not to do the talking, but to listen to people and and sometimes hear what they're not saying, and 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 I think that was really important going to communities and and just getting to know the communities, in in their environment, understanding what's important to them, their issues, what they're facing, and all of that, and then trying to come up, trying to come up with solutions by working with them mm-hmm. not by telling them but working with them and through that listening aspect I think is what you got to do when you're going to the community and then it's not going to be done overnight it's going to take a, a while building relationships like anything like a marriage it takes a long time for sure and you keep working at it and and uh, yeah so I think that's that's uh, one of the big factors that I think I would recommend I mm-hmm. guess relationships are work but I mean they're also so vitally important to to nurture yes yes for sure and it's just really getting to know in a genuine way exactly what like uh, like I say what the interests are and the concerns are and the priorities and you know basically uh, what the communities are you might you might think that they're not responding to your phone calls uh, and for some reason you're being ignored but they might be side they might be detracted because they have bigger Mm -hmm. concerns and and you can't be put off by that and that's where you have to have a lot of patience you have to be accessible you have to be flexible yeah and you just got to be able to to, you know know that you're just going to be you're going to be available and open mm-hmm. with the communities and, and just, yeah, like try and help them as much as you can. Yeah. I um, I really appreciate your comment about how when we go into communities, we should be there to listen. Because um, I think a lot of times, sometimes you might want to go into a conversation or a new relationship with an agenda. Like, these are the things that I want to cover. But it's important to remember that we were given two ears and one mouth for a reason, right? <laughs> you got that right. That's for sure. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's I think really important. And then I think the other thing is, I can remember talking to my dad a lot. He's he's gone on, but when I started at this job, I would visit him and I would ask him a lot of questions, and he would provide me advice and information, and I really took that to heart. And what I learned from there is that speaking to people within the community and especially the elders boy I love that because they just 
first of all, they can they can be real funny, <laughs> and, and, they, and then you can, uh, yeah, they play jokes on me different oh, times, gosh. different ones, and stuff <laughs> like that. Um, but I mean, it was it's through their conversations and it's through visiting. Like it's it's not it's it's not a job when you're going out to build relationships. It's something that you want to do. So if you if you really want to do it, you don't look at it as work. Mm -hmm. Something that you're going to do because it's that's what's in your heart and that's what's important to you. And people will see that, right? Mm -hmm. That's what's so meaningful about it. Yeah. And you get that in return. So when you go out there and you're sitting in people's houses and you're having coffee or tea with them or sitting around a campfire, all of that, you learn a lot from that. And, and that helps build a relationship and then that helps you do what I do within the company and then even talking with the people within my team members and helping them to understand when you're going to the community and when they go to the community mm -hmm. um, uh, like to maybe uh, an approach to talking to the people in the community yeah I have to ask Sandra are there any particularly memorable jokes that you <laughs> could share <laughs> that an elder played on you I just I have to ask <laughs> Oh, yes. I can remember one early in my career. We went to one of the communities, and I was with uh, one of my team members who was uh, looking after the trapping program. And he spoke fluent Cree, and he knew some Dene. And we were going down the hallway, and I was spoken to by one of the senior counselors and, and Dene. And I, I said, what did he say? He said, just say yeah. So I said, okay, yeah. I don't know what I said, and now this counselor is laughing, and I'm saying, okay, hey, this is good, bad. But apparently he asked if I could be his girlfriend, and I said, oh. yeah. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. I said, I'm going to watch you guys from now on. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was kind of funny. Like, oh. it was like, but I thought it was all good humor, and, and the fact that if you can have that I think that's really 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 good mm -hmm. I, well I mean good banter is so important to any relationship right <laughs> exactly. yeah. well, that's awesome mm -hmm. that's too funny um, so you mentioned also relaying some of that information back to your team members at, at Alpac what are maybe some of the questions that your team members have had um, in this relationship building process uh, well when I like I guess I'm not sure if it's the questions they've asked or if it's just uh, wanting to know um, when I go to the communities, I think it's like, Sandra, what do you do, right? Mm. And I just say, well, I just go in there and I listen and I talk to people just like I would be sitting here talking to you, yeah. right? And sort of stuff. And uh, uh, I call, I do what I say, road trips with uh, team members where they're going out to the bush and they're going looking at uh, some of the work, the harvesting or the work that we're doing out in uh, in the forest there is I got to learn from them, from their technical aspect. And then they want to learn from me from my community perspective. And we share conversations. And I think this is really good. Quite like the conversation we're having right now is what mm -hmm. we do. And it's just having them type of conversations. And then, you know, in... I think it's by uh, introducing them to people in the community as well, and then they build on their own merit as well, too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's awesome. You mentioned earlier that uh, you have a background in engineering. <laughs> yeah, that was so long ago. Um, <laughs> I used to do civil engineering. I worked with an engineering firm years ago, way up in McMurray, and I worked with Alberta Transportation before I went back and did... Uh, um, my business uh, administration, which changed my career path into what I'm doing now, I guess, sort of thing. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was uh, it was part of, part way back and stuff like that, and wasn't dealing with people as much. Mm -hmm. uh, and so maybe the reason I'm still doing the job I like is I must like people, I guess. I think so, right? <laughs> I guess so. I I know mm -hmm. for myself, people make my job better too. So. <laughs> yes. Um, are there some ways that the knowledge that you gained from your time working as an engineer um, transfer to the work that you're doing now? Is there any connect mm. connectivity there? I don't know if it's so much. Uh, I don't know if it's so much that, but I think it's it's more having 
you know, them interpersonal skills. If you have them interpersonal skills, uh, it doesn't matter what vocation or uh, mm-hmm. that you're in and stuff like that. I think a lot of that is, is really, really helpful. And then if you're really interested and you want to learn, you can learn. And, I mean, there's people there to help you. And and it, the idea is, like, it's not to give up. I mean, if, if I'm not going to be good at something, maybe it's not meant to me, but maybe I can pursue something else. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you, you just look at because there's, there's such a, and I tell this to my kids, it's like, I don't care what you do, just do it good. I mean, you could be, if you want to be, and, I, and this is seriously, if you want to be a janitor or you want to be yeah. a doctor, just do whatever you want and enjoy it. And if you're enjoying it, that's what's important. Mm-hmm. And do a good job of it. Yeah. That's what I tell young people today. And I'm, I guess I'm so inspired by a lot of the youth today because even I think of my children and the idealism that they have of the world today. And I see a lot, a lot of hope out there. Uh, um, we know that uh, Truth and Reconciliation here is in a couple of days. And yeah. And that's learning about a lot of the history of the indigenous people, what they've went through, and, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, like a lot of the uh, experiences that's been in the past. And I, I think I'd like to encourage a lot of people just to learn about the history. And, and I think it's really important if you learn about the history and about indigenous people. I think I think when you're wanting to go to community and work, I think it'd be really, really helpful, beneficial to know that. So. With the young people today, I want to reiterate again, I think there's a lot of hope there because they're so aspirational mm-hmm. and there's so much opportunity for them. But also keeping in mind that, that there's still a lot of them that need help. And and, yeah. and, and it's it's kind of that two-sided um, uh, path, I guess. And it's it's like trying to make sure that you're helping all of the, all the people. Like, you know, like it's... Absolutely both sides of the road right so like people are succeeding but there's people that are still needing you know, some of that mm-hmm. but, uh, I guess extra 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 leaning on and mm-hmm. and help that you might be able to provide eh? so yeah lift each other up totally you got it <laughs> you know mm-hmm. the words <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, Sandra, I'm curious, you mentioned, uh, you know, being able to attend that, the high school and share some awards there. Um, what advice or wisdom would you have to share to any young people or any young Indigenous people that are considering a career in the forest industry? You know, this is really interesting because I always pull that to the young people that are coming into Alpac is like, like, what got you interested in forestry, right? Yeah. And of, oftentimes people say, well, I wanted to work in the bush. And I said, well, how do you think of it now? It's like, well, it's a little bit different than what I thought. It's <laughs> like, yeah. So what do I say is like, I would encourage young people, you know, to uh, actually go out and share and, and experience what it's like. Uh, um, like, say, example, if, if, if someone approaches me, I'd invite them to the company and maybe set up a field day or mm-hmm. set up a mill tour and get them to, like, uh, I guess, uh, kind of see what all the business is about and yeah. see if they're interested in it. Uh, it might be delusional if they think it's like, you know, it's, it's, you know there's this forestry, but it, it's in the bush, but it's not mm-hmm. kind of what they were thinking. So if you get kind of that reality kind of tour I guess it would be a, like a really really good thing and that's yeah. what I would recommend is is do a little uh, um, research and uh, like I say reach out to some of the forestry companies and I'm sure a lot of them would be more than happy to have people in within the companies that would be more than happy to help and share experiences and tell you what it's all about yeah absolutely I think you know something that I, I really love and, and appreciate uh, working in the forest industry is the forestry community that we have here and yeah. I think that's part of what makes this a little bit noisy conference <laughs> that we're we're a part of right now but mm-hmm. I, I think that's part of what makes it so special is being able to be here all together and and seeing all the familiar faces and and connecting and learning from one another yes for sure it's very very forestry is a very uh, good industry to be in I mean it's uh there's there's a lot to it like yeah i think uh i think it's 
it's not just about being in the bush because there's more to it. I mean, mm -hmm. you have people that work in your, your IT offices, you have people that work in your finance and, and different areas and stuff like that. If you're interested in that and have, you know, still have that interest in forestry, but maybe not totally wanting to go into the forest, but wanting to work a forestry company, there's still opportunity you know, in other areas as well too, and with the pulp mills, there's opportunity for trades and other areas as well as uh, as that. So, again, a great great industry to work uh, work in. Uh, lots of opportunity for sure, and a lot of satisfaction, and great people. Sandra, you shared with me. You know, we had uh, quite a career with Alpac, and and uh, a great focus on community relationships. What do you think about some of the impacts of that time with Alpac and, and what, uh, what you're kind of leaving behind? I guess uh, what's important is that um, I think building the relationships that we've been able to accomplish, it wasn't only myself. I think it was, uh, I would have to say, the leaderships uh, through time within Alpac that have, have been there have always been committed to working with the communities and building them positive relationships. And I was just, uh, I guess, maybe uh, a conduit to be able to help achieve that. And so me leaving behind is, is I guess, the learnings that, uh, that we've learned by working with the communities uh, to have that continued and, and to have, have that commitment from the companies to continue, or especially with the company at Alpac that I work with, you know, that they would continue to want to work with communities in that positive fashion, build them good relationships that are going to be long lasting, and yeah, and continue all that work that we've been doing up to up till today, right? Mm -hmm. I think that to me would be real, real, like to me that that would make me smile, I think, and say, yeah. You know, all the years I spent at Alpac, they were not in vain because there's communities that are benefiting from it, mm -hmm. be it what it is and stuff like that. And whether myself and the position made a difference and whether it didn't, at the end of the day, if you're seeing success and communities are telling you that, I don't have to say it, communities will tell you that, then that's the good thing. Absolutely. And that can be passed on. Yeah. That's wonderful. Mm. Awesome. Well, Sandra, this has been a lot of fun for me. I really appreciated you joining me to record a, a podcast conversation here mm. at the JPL. Um, before we close, is there any final thoughts that you'd like to share? Well, I think the best thought I can share is that just be yourself, be true to yourself. Um, you know, don't be judgmental with other people. But get to know them and, and just, you know, uh, yeah, like like I'm getting to know you and it's like you can, you can glean a lot of friendships and, and they expand into other friendships. And like for me, myself, it's important because now my children do that and mm -hmm. my grandchildren, I'm going to hope that they do that and just carry on that tradition, right? And I think my mom and dad would be proud of that and because they've taught me that and and yeah, and I think it's just, yeah, like just really be yourself. Yeah. And be there, like I, to me, as I, I always think is like I'm a helper and I just want to go out and help people and do things. So. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Sandra. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for another episode of Forestry Talks, a podcast that explores all things forestry in Alberta. We've got some more great guests lined up for our AGM this week. Stay tuned for more. And if you're curious to learn even more about forestry in Alberta, check out our website, loveabforest.ca. I'm your host, Aspen Dudzik, and I'll see you next time. This series is proudly produced by the team at Road 55. Road 55 creates content that connects. For more information, check our website, www.road55.ca.